It seems to me that the most assessment has the most resources. To realize this dream, I want you to learn the practices of different political bodies under different circumstances. Therefore, I skip the direct line to university and took a gap year to travel around the world. This trip was not just about travel, but focused on education. Every time before I go into a new country, I would dedicate at least 100 hours learning an overview of their history, politics, economics, and so on. In many of my destinations, I worked for my room and board, spending three to five hours every day working for a free meal and accommodation, what I call work travel. When I travel like, when I travel like this, when I, if I could immerse myself into the local culture and ex exchange my experience with the, with the locals. And here's a photo of me teaching and farming in an Indian city called Jin. And also, here is a photo of me making a music video for a local singer and make a boy who can say Ni Hao in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. To gain more per academic perspe perspective, I studied anthropology, Middle East studies, and the history of East Islam at the summer schools at Harvard University and Tel Aviv University. As I was doing all this research during my gap year, I, could, I found myself only more and more immersed with my research. So I applied and received a research assistant role at Minerva, my university. I have been obsessed with using mathematical models to, to represent and predict political trajectories since high school, but had little chance to experiment with this methodology. When I proposed this, this exercise, with, with my professor, I was surprised, surprised that my professor supported my, supported my idea. I tried the two models. The first is about the probability of each EU member leaving EU, and the second is about the probability of the hard Brexit. Even more exciting, I had a chance to present my methodology at a conference at the Australian National University. Whenever I saw an opening to learn and to explore, I actively pursued it. This was all instrumental to my momentum towards my goal of becoming a politician. But I feel that I might be more interested in getting the first-hand experience rather than doing pure research. To create this opportunity for myself, I applied for a monitoring and evaluation internship at the United Nations Development Program in my sophomore year and got a chance to take the writing admission test. The test included some functions using Microsoft Excel, which I had absolutely no idea with. I knew if I just gave up, I would lose this opportunity. I registered for three courses at Coursera, and meanwhile, I sent an email to express my interest and action for this internship. Fortunately, I got a chance to, to interview within 24 hours. I spent the whole day looking for all the information I could find about the, about the UN and the internship, and internalized all the information I found to my structured perspective. That understanding surprised my interviewers in the two rounds of the interview. My unorthodox tactic worked, and I got the spot. My supervisor later told me, Ha, huh, when I saw your zero mark on your Excel test, I was about to reject you. But after reading your email, I thought, this guy was interesting, maybe I should talk with this, this guy and then reject him. But the first interview truly surprised me. I thought, we already had a candidate, but you were, and you were underage, so maybe I should just let my colleague talk with you and then reject you. But in the final interview, your, your passion led us to, give, to decide to give you an exemption. I did not take the normal path, but I found a fourth new one to, to fit my enthusiasm. When I started my internship at the UNDP, I realized I was terrible at tedious work and very detail-focused work, making a number of mistakes. But I was determined to, to learn, and I knew I could do better. I reflect with my supervisor about how I can improve and gradually making progress. Two weeks before finishing my internship, I and my team had a chance to dine with the deputy country director, the leader of my supervisor. 
I shared a lot of interest with the deputy country director, and I observed his assistant was about to leave in a week. The responsibilities of his assistant include, included a lot of macro policy design, which I wanted to learn more. In an interval between meetings, I walked directly into his office, and with my resume, I expressed my interest and how I fit my interest role. Shortly after, I was told I won the role. I strived in my role, new job, drafting several policies and founding our alumni network. And, and I knew I couldn't achieve of these accomplishments without learning how to do the tedious work at the beginning. Without the monitoring and evaluation, evaluating all of these projects, I would have not gained a broader perspective of the UNDP's strategy and practices. I learned that the, the ability to get an opportunity is not just about how skilled you are, but how much momentum you worked to build for yourself and your desire to learn. While I was building my momentum in the public sector, I knew I needed to grow my professional experience in the, pri in the private sector as well. In the summer of my fresh year, I was planning to continue my work travel, and it occurred to me it brought so much value to me. And it bothered me why there is no such existing platform in China, and why cannot I make one by myself for the Chinese market. The idea really excited me. In three days, I have assembled a founding team with an average of 19, and in a week, we raised a seed investment and rented a tiny office. We started inviting our friends to have workshops with us. And in three weeks, we had our first minimum, minimum pro, uh, product. And in a week, and, and in a month, we received, received, we received our first order. At the end of that summer, we also received an offer from an angel investor. However, our, our team still decided to continue our studies at university rather than commit full-time entrepreneurship. But this sort of journey transformed my view on business. I used to think entrepreneurship was just about making money. But this sort of journey let me realize the, entre the entrepreneurship and the business was not just about making money, but also support the society and our personal growth. It shifted my perspectives and made me want to explore, explore more in the private sector. During my summer of entrepreneurship, I met many investors, but I got a constant rejections. It never stopped me, but it made me more curious about their perspective. How to, what's their view of entrepreneurship? In my first sophomore semester, I had a chance to be a research assistant at a SoftBank Ventures Korea. To contextualize my university, we can study in seven countries in our four-year program, and my university partnered with local NGO, the local government agencies, and local corporates to create projects for students to participate in. And SoftBank is among our partners in South Korea, where I studied at the, at the semester. My responsibility include, included researching and analyzing the Chinese AI market. And to learn more about the mature enterprise, I interned at McKinsey in the, following, in the following summer. Also inspired by the model of connecting business and sustainability, I founded Young Sustainable Impact China a non-profit sustainability incubator. Up to my resignation last year as a CEO, we had we have incubated 40 startup, startups for sustainability. Combining my first-hand experience and a conversation with professionals in the industry, I realized I was more and more interested in executing creative ideas and solutions rather than just researching and consulting. I had a new goal. I want to create a new, new, great, and respectful startup for myself. I shifted my momentum again. I knew I still had much to learn. Senior year was approaching. I was about to study at Hong Kong University of Science and Technology as a visiting scholar. For some reason, during my last semester, I had to leave Hong Kong and take classes online. I was about to decide if I wanted to work for a mature internet giant or a growing startup. When I don't know what to do, I look for opportunities for me to explore and to learn. Fortunately, I, I, can took, uh, I could have took advantage of my remote study 
and had a chance to enter at ByteDance. It was such a great learning journey, since tons of high-quality resources were available to interns. However, ByteDance, while ByteDance did pretty well in facilitating employees' creativity, we had to specialize in a very specific niche. Therefore, I decided to join a startup where I could continue working and pursuing my goals without being impeded by unnecessary structures. Finally, I joined a startup, thus I, I backed it. Within, five, within 15 months, I was promoted to a partner, which would have not, never happened for me at a large corporate. The theme of this conference is momentum. It can mean grabbing opportunities, exploring different industries, and broadening your perspective. It can mean a lot of things, but I want to elaborate it more. As a popular saying goes, Every dust of time falls on a person as a mountain. The powerful current of time and expectations are pushing us ahead. We are expected to study hard, to enter good institution, to find a good job, to marry, to have, to have kids, to educate them, to enter another circle. It might be constricting, especially if we do not ponder the what, the how, and the why. I understand the context of this trend, but the society is changing, and our job market is transforming. A study from McKinsey Global Institute suggests in our generation, up to 2030, the intelligent robots and agents will replace as, many, as much as 30% of our, our current uh, work labor. Many of our future jobs do not exist, even, do not exist yet. Due to the unsure state of the future, the general knowledge, transferable skills, and passion will be more and more important. I learned that if you build your momentum, you will move somewhere, even if it's not where you expect it. From being a statesman to being an entrepreneur, every step I took moved me closer to where I needed to be and taught me something valuable about myself. It seemed to me that I tried too many different career paths, but I see it as a single journey, a single journey to build up my momentum, to explore the society, and a single journey to explore myself. And I believe this journey will never end. Thank you.